welcome to the third class of mathematics in the very first class we discussed about uh, trigonometric identities uh, left hand side proving equal to right hand side proving then in the next class that is in the second class you have learned how to find out the values of non standard trigonometric angles so uh, with the help of uh, the table the red table book how you are actually going to find out the values which are non standard standard values you already know but non standard values how you calculate that is what you have learned as i said in the previous class also you have learned that table for this chapter the chapter which i am going to start now and the chapter which we are going to start now is what is called height and distance this is the second chapter of trigonometry you have two chapters of trigonometry in your syllabus the first one was the identity uh, and the second chapter is this one which is your height and distance now some questions in height and distance will give you angles which are non standard like 40 degree or sometimes 23 degree 24 minutes but then now you know that you already know how to calculate or how to find out the value of such non standard angles it may be sin it may be cos it may be tan now i should tell you that in this height and distance uh, a little bit of uh, this height and distance is what we have done in class 9 also like we call that as solutions to right angle triangle now in a triangle now if this is a b and c now we have a right angle triangle here this is what is if i am taking this as the angle of reference main angle this is what to be base base is that side which is the given angle at 90 degree and perpendicular is that opposite to the given angle is perpendicular this is what is hypotenuse so in this chapter in height and distance is all about to whether to take sin or to take cos or to take tan now we will not be requiring that cosec sec and cot all questions you can solve it by using only sin cos and tan again i should tell you that some people have early brown here and turn prominently black now this is what will be requiring here in this height and distance now in any question read the question carefully because every question is a statement based question yes in the board exam they may give you diagram but in most of the cases they may not give you the diagram so you have to make the diagram yourself so read the question again and again understand the question and then convert it into a diagram now once you have the diagram now then i'll tell you that how are you going to plan that diagram after you get the diagram there in the question you see whether you are given the first side the second side and the angle of reference now it is all about this three combination if you are given first side and second side then the question will tell you find what is the angle now you'll see the two types of angles this angle is what to call as angle of incidence and angle of sorry angle of elevation angle of uh, uh, depression now in other cases you may given one side and you will may be given an angle and then you will be asked to find what is that side for example you may be given a base and then you will be given this angle and they will ask you what is that perpendicular okay so that means it is all about this so some people have curly brown here turn from in black that is the formula for a sin cos and tan and also about whether two sides are given you will ask to find angle or you may be given one side and the angle and then you will be asked to find the second side now before i go on to solving questions first let us see what exactly this height and distance is now many of you ask me at least sir what is the significance of trigonometry as you go to higher classes you will see the significance of trigonometry but just now at present the significance of trigonometry is what i want to tell you now in this height and distance you see trigonometry has lot of significance lot of uses in our day to day life for example you are going somewhere let's suppose you are going and then came across a river yes is the river now if you want to measure what is the width of the river from here to there what is the width now from here to there the river is very big now you cannot measure it you cannot go with a tape and then measure it measuring tape and do it so by standing here sitting here by taking your pen and paper you will be able to calculate the width of the width of the river by using your height and distance by using trigonometry similarly the tree on the other side of the river let's suppose you have one tree on the other side of the river 
Now what is the height of the tree? By sitting here on this side, you will be able to find out what is the height of the tree. Now, you see how? That means you might have seen that again in geography or different subjects, they will give us the height of the mountain, they will give us the height of the hill. Nobody actually measures you with the measuring tape. In fact, in most of the cases, you know height of something which is very, very big is measured by using trigonometry. Even the height of a very, very tall building, you can measure it by using uh, trigonometry. So that means if you are using trigonometry, then definitely you know that it involves angles. As you can see, this angle, which you call as angle of reference, and it also involves perpendicular base and hypotenuse. So today uh, we will discuss about only a single triangle but then the question becomes more complex, more complicated when the triangle, single triangle gets converted into double triangle, at least two triangles when is there, then again it becomes a little difficult to solve. It's possible basically if time permits then today only I'll be going to the double triangle but then again if uh, in this single triangle if it is taking time then I think in the next class I'll be discussing about the double triangle in this height and distance. But now main thing that you have to know is okay what it is so that takes time so it is all about your planning you have to plan whether to take sign or whether to take cos or whether to take tan sign is all about this sign cos and tan only now and also once you have decided that which one you are going to take and that decision should come by taking this one which side is given if you are, like for example if you are given okay let's suppose one triangle is there you made a triangle and in that triangle you know that this is given 10 meters so suppose this height is given 10 meter and this base is given as 20 meter then the question is telling you to find this angle now if this is angle then since the question is now telling you to find this angle what this angle is you are given two sides if two sides are given angle is missing then as this is the angle then you have to decide now okay that side opposite to the given angle is perpendicular so perpendicular is given to you then here base this is base base is given now since you know perpendicular and base are given then perpendicular base now say perpendicular hypotenuse I need perpendicular base whether I should take sine or a cross or a tan will depend on in which ratio all both P and B are there you can see P and B both of them are there in tan so that means I will now you know to find out how much this theta is now here I will select tan so it is all about selecting a sine or a cross or a tan so I selected tan because P and B both of them are there in this in this diagram so now I will write tan theta is perpendicular by base and I don't know what is theta. So here it is, tan theta is what is equal to perpendicular. I'll take perpendicular as 10 and base is what is 20. Then if I cancel it, then tan theta is equal to half. Half is not the standard value of tan. Tan doesn't have half. Yes, sine and cos has sine half as the standard value. But then this is what is 0 0.5. 0 0.5 means I'll take it as 0 0.5000. Now this value of tan is what now you have to see from the table. The red table book. Now see what value of tan is 0 0.500. And then from there we'll get the value of theta. Now again, similar question if I discuss another one. Here again another triangle is there. And you are given here, this angle is 30 degrees. Now somehow the question has given you, what is this? How much is this? Let's suppose if I am taking as ABC. And let's suppose this is given as 50 meter. It says AC is 50 meter. So now the question is telling you, find what is AB? This AB. Now you have to decide what is given and what is asked. You are given this 50 meter. Since this is opposite to 9 degrees, the hypotenuse is given to you. And the other one is opposite to 30 degrees is side AB and that is what is perpendicular because opposite to the given angle of reference is what is perpendicular. So this is perpendicular that is hypotenuse. Now you know perpendicular hypotenuse so I have to combine see which one out of the three is perpendicular hypotenuse. Perpendicular hypotenuse is with sine. So I have to take here sine. So then I'll take this as sine and the angle is known. Previously angle was missing. But now we know the angle. One of the side is missing. You can see one side is given, angle is given, another side is missing. Second side is missing. So I'll take sine since the angle is 30 degrees. Sine 30 is what is equal to perpendicular by hypotenuse. Sine 30, don't forget, is a standard angle. Sine 30 class 9 table. You know the value. In case if this is not a standard value, if this is a 40 degree or a 42 degree or a 79 degree, then you have to use red table book and write down the value below. This is sine 30, so since it is a standard value, so I'll write sine 30 value as half. And there, perpendicular, perpendicular is this one. The question is telling you to find that perpendicular. And perpendicular in this case, I'll write AB. Perpendicular is AB, side AB of the triangle, this side. 
and hypotenuse is there 50 is zero zero. Now if I cross multiply, so here 2 into AB is twice of AB and that is what is 50. Now from here AB value is coming, AB value is what is 50 by 2 and it cancel 25. Now this type of question is what will come across and these are easier questions. I should also tell you that in your board exam, only one question is set up from this height and distance and that one question will be carrying four marks and it comes in section B uh, where you have the option to uh, leave the question but then sometimes uh, questions from height and distance are very very simple and easy and as they are very simple and easy so you will should be able to uh, attempt uh, the question from this section B but the only thing is that whatever questions I am going to give you whatever questions that I will be solving listen to it very carefully and the questions which I am giving you as a home do it generally honestly and uh, submit. So yes, uh, height and distance is all about statement and since statement should be there so that's why many of you are very very uh, bad in English you don't understand what is written in the question so that's why if you don't understand by reading it once read it second time third time because I've seen that most of the time students are very very weak in statement based question like for example menstruation automatic uh, yeah, commercial automatic and uh, yeah, problem based on quantity question these are some of the chapters where statements are written sentences are written and that sentence you have to convert in this chapter you have to convert sentence into into diagram and from the diagram is all about this combination so this combination uh, again I'm repeating you don't need cosec yes if you like you can use cosec second court also but I would say that even without them even without uh, those three ratios by using just sine cos and tan also you will be able to solve any question all right and then before I start now one last thing I should tell you you'll come across here a lot of times almost every question two terms one is called angle of elevation and the other one is called angle of depression now when somebody is there at a lower level let's suppose you are there on the ground and you are looking at your friend who is there in the terrace of a building look okay, here you are here on the ground let's suppose this one is the ground you are here and your friend is on the top of the building there he is there now since you are here, I am not making your diagram as a height, your height around 1.4 or 1.6 meter, but I will just take it as a dot, even though images are I have a height, my eye is there. Okay, we will take it somewhere on the ground, until unless the height of a person is not given, then we will take it on the exact on that line only. Now the question says, you are looking at your friend up. This line, if I am by the way, naming this as ABC. From here, as you are looking at your friend, this line is what is called the line of sight. Sight, S I G S A sight. You are looking. Now, she thinks that a ray is going from your eye to your friend. A ray, almost like in the movies of Nagin, how the red rays are going to destroy something. So, same, we think that from your eye also a ray is going there. So, this is what we call as line of sight. This is the line of sight. And this is the ground. The angle which is made between the line of sight and the ground, on the level ground, this angle is, which I am representing is by theta. This angle is called angle of elevation. And elevation is something which is yeah, when the person or the object is above. You are looking up. From here you are looking up. So elevation is always from down to up. So this is what is called angle of elevation angle of elevation so you'll come across so whenever they say a person is there on the ground looking at the top of the building then the angle of elevation is 60 degrees then you'll write here 60 degree or a 30 degree or whatever and most of the cases you know that in this uh, chapter most of the question will be a standard values so I hope you people still remember the standard values of sine cos and tan zero degree zero degree hardly you will get zero degree no chance of 90 degree so the only thing you have to remember is sine, cos and tan especially tan 30 degree 45 degree 60 degree these three values of sine, cos and tan is what you should be thought of and especially tan you will see most of the questions have tan now let me revise it in case if you have forgotten your class 9 table yeah again in height and distance you don't require 0 degree that's why I did not write 0 degree you will not be requiring 90 degree you will be requiring only this 30, 45 and 60 okay let's revise Sine 30 degree is half. Sine 0 was 0, half. 45 is 1 by root 2. And 60 is root 3 by 2. This is what is the value of sine. 
sin 30 is half, sin 45 is 1 by root 2, sin 60 is root 3 by 2. Similarly, cos, reverse, reverse it. What you wrote this way, from there you reverse. Cos 30 value is root 3 by 2. What was 60 now becomes 30 here. Cos 30 is root 3 by 2. Cos 45 is same. What is sin 45? Same is cos 45. So I am going in reverse order. And similarly, the last one. What is sin 30 becomes cos 60. Okay, but more than this sign and cos, the most important is tan. Don't forget the value of tan, 30, tan, 31. You'll see that 90% of your question in height and distance is tan. Okay, then tan. Tan 30 value is 1 by root 3. Yeah, remember it like this now. Tan 30 is 1 by root 3. Now, no need of making that table, class 9 table, which you wrote first one, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, then again divided by 4, square root, lengthy numbers. Now, just these numbers, at least 9 numbers, I'm going to write, try to memorize them. Now, many of you already know it. Just remember tan 30 is 1 by root 3. I'm just giving a trick uh, to remember this, especially tan, because almost everywhere. Now, you know the value of tan 30, 45, 60 should be there in the tip of your finger. Alright, then if tan 30 is 1 by root 3, which you have remembered, what is there in the numerator? 1, you place it there. That means tan 45 value is what you see in the numerator, that is tan 45 value. Similarly, what you see in the denominator, you take there. So that means tan 45 value is 1, tan 45 value is 1, and tan 60 value is root 3. So see, you, so easy to remember. If you remember 1 by root 3, take this one here and root 3 there. These are your standard values. You will see that most of the question you have to use this tan. But then it doesn't mean that you will not use sine and cos. Some questions you have sine 30, 45. Yeah, other than this angle, if 30, 45, 60, other than this angle, then it will be a non standard angle. And for non standard angle, you have to use the red table book. So since you will be using that red table book uh, for non standard angle, so wherever you come across non standard angle, you will be using the red table book. Okay, so this is what is angle of elevation. Now, one more term. In addition to angle of elevation, there is also one more term which is called angle of depression. Now, what is that angle of depression? Elevation is you are looking up, depression is you are looking down. Now, we are changing places now. Let's suppose you are on the top of the building now. You are in the terrace of the building. This is the building. And your friend is there on the ground. Now, from here, you are there on the top of the building. Now, you are looking at your friend. As you are looking at your friend now, this is what is your line of sight. You are there. Is your line of sight. Now, if this one is your line of sight, you are looking down. Then, this is not depression. This is not angle of depression. Now, think that if you are there on the top of the building, if you are not, not looking anywhere, you are not looking down, then you will be looking straight. Now, think that this is your line of straight. If you are not looking anywhere, this is your line of straight. Line of sight. Line of sight is straight. Now, you are looking down. That means your line of sight is down. This angle which is created when you are not looking anywhere, if you are not looking anywhere, straight. Now, you are looking down. This angle which is created is what is called angle of depression. This is what is angle of depression. So that is what is angle of elevation. See, when you are looking up, angle of elevation. But when you are looking down, that is what is. Now the problem with angle of depression is most of the case angle of depression, as you can see, is outside the triangle. We need this triangle now. Because as you have to combine this sign, perpendicular to hypotenuse cos, base the hypotenuse and tan, perpendicular base. Then this theta is a part which is not a triangle. Then what we'll do? Since this two lines, this line and this line, they are parallel. These two lines are parallel. That theta is useless. We cannot use because it is not a part of the triangle. So that theta, I will bring it down here. This. Because you know that these two lines are parallel. These angles are called interior alternate angles. So what is that angle? Change this angle also. So immediately, even though depression is given, bring it down and make it into elevation. So that means, what was the angle there in elevation? How we have created elevation? Even in depression also, you can bring it down and make it into elevation. Only for making this purpose, diagram purpose, you can mark that as depression. But ultimately, even that angle of depression is brought down and made into angle of elevation. This is what is your angle of elevation and angle of depression. Now, rather than giving my example, already uh, two examples I have given already here, what kind of question will come across in height and distance. I think rather than that, uh, I'll solve some question from your exercise, from your textbook. <coughs> So I'll just pick some. Uh, today I think uh, it is not possible to do all kinds of questions from height and distance, but today I'll be discussing with you a single triangle question, which are comparatively easier as compared to a double triangle questions. 
Okay, so as I said already, so here I have a, a printout of your uh, exercise. This is exercise 20 from your uh, textbook, <coughs> so which you are yet to get. I think when you get yes, this one, but I'll be putting a PDF of this uh, down in the description. Uh, link will be there. You can download it. I may give the whole exercise today, but then uh, you may practice it up to a certain question. Okay, I'll let you know up to which question because beyond that it becomes a little difficult because from there double triangle starts. So when a double triangle starts, if you can manage, you will go ahead. Or it's maybe in the next class. I'll try to uh, do the class one more uh, within this week. So during that time, I'll be discussing this double triangle. All right, here then. Let me start with question number one. Question number one start says. A kite is flying at a height of 75 meters from the level ground. Attached to a string inclined at 60 degrees to the horizontal. Find the length of the string of the kite. Okay, it is about flying of a kite. Now see, no diagram is given, just the question is there. Okay, I'll try to put this question there above. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to do it that. But now let me explain verbally what exactly they are saying. Kite. Now everyone of you know how a kite is flown. They suppose this is a kite. Now you don't have to make a diagram of a kite. Just the dot is a kite. Now somebody is flying a kite. The, the string is attached. And don't forget, string never goes straight vertically. The string will be usually inclined like this. Eh? Now the question is telling you, what is the height of the kite? Here, kite height from the ground. And this one is the ground. And every time when you are making the ground, they may say the ground. They may not say the ground. This is what you have to make, ground. And yes, every time the triangle that you are creating must be a right angle triangle. Because trigonometry is not trigonometry without right angle triangle. So here I created a right angle triangle. Now, for convenience, let me name the vertices as ABC. You can name anything you like. Okay, now let me write down the data given. A kite is flying at a height of 75 meters from the level ground. Level ground, the kite is there vertically 75 meters above the ground. From here to there, the kite is there, there above 75 meters. And it is attached to a string inclined at 60 degrees to the horizontal. So as this is the string, this one is the string of the kite. The one who is flying the kite is here. So the string and the ground is making an angle of 60 degrees. There you are. And the question now is telling you, what is the length of the string to the nearest meter? Okay, I'll explain to you what is the meaning of that. The answer... The question is telling you, convert the answer to the nearest meter. So that means the answer is going to come in decimal. So that decimal converted into a nearest meter. Rounding off is what you have to do. Okay, now let's see. In this diagram, you are given this 60 degree. Angle of reference is this one. You are given that 75 meter. And the question is telling you, find what is the length of the string. They are not asking this. They are asking the length of the string. This one is asked. Okay, now. You are given angle. You are given one side. Second side is missing. Now, whether I should use sine or I should use cos or I should use tan will depend on what is given. If this is the angle, opposite of the given angle is perpendicular. Okay, here we go. Perpendicular is given to you. What is the arc? You are asked to find this at 90 degree opposite. Hypotenuse is arc. And you are given this angle. Angle is given. So then now think sine, cos or tan has both P and F. And you know P and F perpendicular and hypotenuse is there in sine because some people have P by F. So if B and F was there, then you'll use cos. If you have P and B or B and P, then it is tan. So this is how you have to do the selection. Since it is about P and F, I'll use sine. So let me write now sine. And the angle is 60, so here I'll use 60 degree. So sine 60 degree is perpendicular by hypotenuse. Now, this is the first question. That's why I'm writing the formula P by S. From the next question, I'll directly write which one is perpendicular, which one is hypotenuse. 60 degree. Just now I made the table, standard angle. Sine 60 value is root 3 by 2. And if sine 60 value is root 3 by 2, then perpendicular now. Yeah, perpendicular is 75 meters. And hypotenuse is what the question is telling you to find. And hypotenuse in this diagram is AC. The question is telling you to find that. Now I'll cross multiply. If I cross multiply AC into root 3 is root 3 AC. And this is 2 into 75 is 150. Now this I want AC. Root 3 I'll transfer on the other side. So yeah, AC will be equal to 150 over root 3. Now see, denominator has a root. And in class 9 you have learned about rationalizing denominator. That is what I am going to do now. Let me rationalize it by multiplying with root 3. The upper side also I will multiply with root 3. Then that is what is equal to 150 into 1.732. You all know the value of root 3. Root 3 value is 1.732. 
and on the lower side you have root 3 into root 3, 3. So I can cancel this 3 with 150, 50 times. Now I have multiply this too. So 1.732, if I multiply this with 50, so let's multiply. This is 0, 5 to 10, 5 3, 15, 16, 5 7, 35, 36, 5 1, 5, 8. Now there are 1, 2, 3 place a decimal, 1, 2, 3 place a decimal. So your yeah, hypotenuse, the length of the string is E, is 86.6 meters. Okay, I got this as an exact answer. 86.0 has no significance, so it is 86.6 meters. But since the question tells you nearest meter, okay, I don't need decimals, I have to remove decimals. If I remove this 0.6, since this 0.6 is more than 5, so it will give here 1. So AC is approximately equal to 87 meters. So nearest, if this number was less than 5, then I'm not maybe it becomes 86 meters. But if this number is more than 5, rounding off this number is increasing by 1. That is what is the meaning of to the nearest meter. So now you can see the length of the string of the kite is like now one centimeter you can write the length of the string of the kite is 87 meters. See, very simple. This is how you have to do. Again, I should tell you that we are now discussing only a single diagram, single triangle. Now, it becomes more complicated when more than one triangle will be there. So gradually we are going there. Okay, now let's see uh, the other question. Let me jump to uh, number three. Okay, number three says, the shadow of Kutub Minar Okay, yeah, yeah, little bit of history. Kutub Minar is 81 meter long when the angle of elevation of the sun is 41 degree and 30 minutes. Now, there it is, non standard angle. They are saying 41 degree and 30 minutes. Find the height of the Kutub Minar, and they are also give, have given you find or use tan 41 degree and 30 minutes as 0 0.8847. Value is given here, but then don't forget this value will not be given to you in the exam. You have to use the red table book and find out the value. Okay, here it is. A Kutub Minar, a building, when they say a building, the tree, don't forget our line, just one straight line. Anything which stands on the ground vertically. Building, doesn't mean that you will make a building with windows and doors. You will not make a Kutub Minar with all the decoration. You will not make a tree with all the branches. Tree means line. Kutub Minar is also a line. Building is also, a, even a hill, now don't make a hill. Hill is also a line. So anything which stands vertically on the ground, just you know, height and distance, it is just a vertical line. Okay, here you go then. Yeah, Kutub Minar here. And it says, this Kutub Minar is the shadow, sorry, not Kutub Minar, the shadow of the Kutub Minar. If this is the Kutub Minar and the sun is shining here, then the shadow. Now see, where will be the shadow? Shadow will be on the ground. On the ground. This is the shadow. And the question says, the shadow of this Kutub Minar is 81. Don't forget, shadow will be on the ground. So the length of the shadow is given. The shadow of Kutub Minar is 81 meter long. When the angle of elevation of the sun, so ele elevation of sun means the sun was there, so angle of elevation, elevation and depression we discussed just now. Angle of elevation is 41, 40 degree and 30, sorry not 40, it is 41 degree and 30 minute. Yeah, 41 degree and 30 minute. So this is given and the question is telling you find the height of the Kutub Minar okay if I am going with A, B, C now the height of the Kutub Minar this is the Kutub Minar A, B I have to find what is A, B like in the previous question is the same thing this is arc this is given okay let's see this is the angle angle is given one side is given second side is missing so in that case now I will see what is given what is this between angle and 90 degree this side is base base is given. The opposite of the given angle is perpendicular. So, this perpendicular arcs. Now, perpendicular and base. Now, I have to think. Sin, cos or tan. So, what has perpendicular also and base also? Base also and perpendicular also. Sin doesn't have sin has hypotenuse. Cos doesn't have cos. Cos has hypotenuse. There is no hypotenuse. There. Tan has both P and B. So, then I am going to select now tan. And the angle is 40 degree and sorry. 41 degree and 30 minutes. So tan is perpendicular by base. Okay. Now this tan 41 degree and 30 minutes. You will search in the red table book. You have already learned how to search the value. So write down the value of tan 41 degree and 30 minutes. But in this question, just below the question, they have given the value. So I am taking that value. But in the exam again, I am repeating this kind of value will not be given in the question. You have to see from the table and write down. So the value that they have given, even if you check a red table, we will find this. 
8847 is already given in the question is equal to perpendicular so perpendicular is the height of the kutumina which is ab base and base is what is 81 now since the question is telling us to find what is ab so i'll cross multiply now 1 into ab is ab then this is 0.8847 into 81 So let's multiply now. 0.8847. I am going to multiply with 81. So let's multiply. And here they have not said calculate to the nearest meter. You have to calculate the answer to whatever answer is coming. So that uh, with that number of decimals you have to calculate. So let me multiply now here. 7488. Now as I multiply with 8, 8756. 84, 32, 37, then 8864, 67, then again 64, 70. So that is 7, 0, 6. This is also 6. This is 1 and 7 and 1, 2, 3, 4 place of decimal. 1, 2, 3, 4 place of decimal means A, B, E equal to. 71.6607 meter that means the height of kutub minar is 77.6607 so since they have not said calculate to one place of decimal if one place of decimal then you have to write up to 71.6 but the next number is more than 5 so you write 71.7 meter but nothing is mentioned in the question about how many decimal places are to the nearest meter So we'll keep our answer as just four place of decimal. This is AB, and that AB is what is the height of Kutub Minar. All right, now let's move on to the next question. <coughs> now let me take question number five. And question number five says, a string of a kite. Again, it is about a kite. The string of a kite is 150 meter long, and it makes an angle of 60 degree with the level ground. Okay, again, let me make a kite. Let this be the kite. Again, I have to make a right angle triangle. If this is right angle triangle, the string of the kite is given as 150 meter. This is what the string of the kite is. Then this makes an angle of 60 degree. The string is making an angle. String and the ground, the angle which is being made is 60 degree. And find the height of the kite from the ground. So the question now is telling you what is the height of the kite from the ground. Just the opposite of the previous question. The previous question was asking what is the length of the string. Now the length of the string is given. Now you have to find the height of the kite. So if I am naming this as A B C, okay, this flag. One side is given. That side is opposite to that. Okay, so it is hypotenuse is given. Then this angle given means, and you are asked to find this opposite of given angle is perpendicular. So now I need this perpendicular hypotenuse. Combination of perpendicular hypotenuse is sine. Sine has P and X. So I would use sine. So sine 60 degree is equal to perpendicular by hypotenuse. Sine 60 standard angle again. So root 3 by 2. Is perpendicular. Perpendicular is our AB. Question is telling us to find that AB. And hypotenuse has given already hypotenuse one fifteen. So I think for convenience, I think we can cancel this to this cancel it here. Seventy five cross multiply. AB value is one into AB is AB. This is multiplied this to give you seventy five into root three. So AB is equal to seventy five into one point seven three two. That is what is the value of root three. Let's multiply one point seven three two into seventy five. So if I multiply 5 to 10, 5 to 15, 16, 35, 36, 5 1 5 8, then 7 2 14, 7 3 21, 22, 7 7 49, 51, 7 1 7, which is 12. So that is 0 0 8. This will be 9. This also will be 9 to 1. Three places of decimal. If you bring it here, so there you are. The height of the guy at the ground is AB, and that is 129.9. Again, here they have not said to round up to the nearest meter, so I keep it at that. Keep the answer as 129.9 meter. Now, after this, uh, let's go to next question. Now, uh, we will gradually now it's becoming more and more uh, complex. Now, let me from five jump on to number nine. Okay, let's see what it says. Okay, it is also about a kite. Now, in fact, a very similar question is what I am taking, but the thing is that three different kind of question based on kite only. That's why read the question, understand what the question is saying, make a diagram. The diagram must be right angle triangle. Without right angle triangle, it's not possible to solve. So make the diagram into a right angle triangle. Then only proceed. The length of the string between the kite and the point of the ground is 90 meter. Okay. Here we go. Kite. So here, this is the kite. 
the length of the string between a kite and the point of the ground is 90 meter. So this, in the simple language, the length of the string is 90 meter. If the string makes an angle of theta, okay, here it is. This angle is theta. Now we don't know what that angle is. Theta. And such that tan theta. Now see, here they have given the diagram angle in a little tricky manner. So 15 by 8. So tan theta. So theta is such that tan theta is 15 by 8. Now it is not necessary that you have to use tan. You may have to use cos, you may have to use sine, but they have given you a value of tan theta. Yeah, it is neither from the rate table book nor it is the standard angle. Now, that's why I said this question is a little tricky. So, three different questions I have done just now tight, but all three of them were different. So, this is 90, this is theta, and this theta is such that tan theta would have been 15 by 8. Then the question is now telling you how high is the kite? Assume that there is no stack in the string, the string is not sagging, it is straight, that is what you have to assume. Okay, here we go now. The question is telling you how high is the kite? Okay, so there you go. Perpendicular. You need perpendicular hypotenuse. If you have perpendicular hypotenuse, then you can find the angle. Okay, now look at the problem. Question is asking you to find perpendicular. They have given you hypotenuse, but even angle is not given. So two two things missing cannot you cannot solve. At least hypotenuse and angle, if it was given, then you would have easily found out perpendicular. But angle also missing and one more side also is missing. But then here a hint is given to you. Alright, our knowledge of class 9 is what I am going to use now. Tan is P by D, 15 by 8. So that means perpendicular is 15, base is 8. So if you know perpendicular is 15, base is 8, ratios are this, then let's find out what is hypotenuse. I hope you still remember the formula. Hypotenuse is equal to perpendicular square plus base square. So hypotenuse is equal to perpendicular is 15 square and base is 80 square. So h is equal to 15 square is 225, this is 64. So this is hypotenuse to the root of 289 and 289 square root is hypotenuse is what is 17. Alright, now what I do? Since perpendicular and hypotenuse, I have to combine perpendicular and hypotenuse. And perpendicular and hypotenuse combination is sine, but we are given a value of 10. Now, why we did all this hard work is because now, since I have calculated hypotenuse, now I can find anything, sine, cos, tan, anything, whatever the question is telling us, I can calculate all. So, since it is perpendicular hypotenuse, I have to take sine. So, sine theta is equal to perpendicular by hypotenuse. Now, sine theta, now, see, I need sine theta now. So, now let me calculate what is sine theta. And you know, sine theta is perpendicular hypotenuse. Since sine theta is perpendicular hypotenuse, so let's see, what is our perpendicular? Perpendicular is 15. So then perpendicular is 15. And just now we found out hypotenuse and hypotenuse is 17. So sine theta I take 15 by 17. And on the other side, if I go perpendicular now for theta perpendicular this A B, that is what we are calculating. And hypotenuse is there, 90. Now from here we can easily find out what B is. Let's cross multiply. We have 17 A B is what is equal to multiplication between the two. 0. 45, 1350. So, AB value will be equal to 1350 divided by 70. So, you can divide this and whatever comes, that must be equal. Right in decimal, usually we calculate in terms of decimal. You have to save time. I am not dividing it, you can divide it right now. So, whatever comes, that is what is the height of the type. Yeah, let's go to now the next question. Okay, uh, now this uh, question, I am going to question number 12. This question is about uh, the tree being broken by the wind. Now a very uh, windy season is coming. So when there is a very very strong wind, you know, trees are broken. Now this question is something like that. The upper part of the tree is broken by the wind and makes an angle of 30 degree with the ground. See, this one was a very tall tree. Now here is the ground. But this tree got broken somewhere here. And this upper part of the tree now, goes down. Okay. Now what was previously this one now has gone down. So if I give it a name like A, B, C and don't forget this A, C. A, C was here before. 
the, the upper part got broken and now the, the top has gone to the ground now. It got broken here only, it got broken, now the tree is falling down and the top of the tree, the top of the tree now has come down here on the ground. The upper part of the tree is broken by the wind and makes an angle of 30 degree with the ground. Here it is, the tree is making an angle of 30 degree. The distance from the bottom of the tree, this is the bottom, that is the root of the tree, to the point where the top touches the ground. So, where the top, now the top of the tree has to reach here. From this to the top of the tree, it is 5 meters. The person is saying that. From the bottom of the tree to the top of the tree, now it has become 5 meters. And find the height of the tree. Now, so it is not mentioned, find the height of the tree before it was broken. Actually, the question should have been, what was the height of the tree before it was broken? So then you have to understand the height of the tree before it was broken was from here to here. That means you have to find AB also, you have to find AC also because that AC only was what was the top part of the tree. So again, here the question is not telling you to find only one. The question is to find not only AB, this part also as well as this part. So top part is what you have to find. So two times calculation you have to do. Alright, I am going to the first part now. You can see this is given. And here this is this and I want this. And that is perpendicular, base and perpendicular. This is angle, and base and perpendicular is tan. I'll use tan 30 degree is equal to base by perpendicular. Sorry, perpendicular by base. So then tan 30 is 1 by root B. Then perpendicular is AB, and base is what is 5. Now I'll cross multiply. It is root 3 AB is what is equal to 5. Again, cross it. You have AB equal to 5 by root 3. So this is what is AB. I got this AB. But I got in this form, I want in decimal. So let me rationalize this root 3. This is also root 3. That is 5, 1.732 and over 3. So root 3 into root 3. So if I multiply this, 5 into 2 is 10, 5 3 15, 16, 5 7 35, 36, 5 1, 5 8, and divided by 3. So this is what will happen. If I divide it, I am going to get 3 2 plus 6. 26, 3, 8, 24, again 26, 3, 8, 24, 20, again 3, 6. So I will go to only two place of decimal, so it is coming 6. So the next digit is coming 6. So I don't want to go too many decimals. Since this 6 is more than 5, so this I am going to write this as 8, 9. So that means from here to here it is 2.89 meter. But I also need this one. Now if you want, now since this is a right angle triangle, base also you know, perpendicular also you know, now you can use Pythagoras theorem and find hypotenuse, that we also can do. But since our perpendicular is very complex, now you can see 2.89, so then I will use trigonometry only to calculate this part. Now what is this part? This is hypotenuse. And let me use this one now, base, base and hypotenuse. Base is given to you and hypotenuse is what I am calculating. So base and hypotenuse is cos. So cos 30 degree is equal to base by hypotenuse. And cos 30 value is root 3 by 2. And this is what is this one? This is 5. And then hypotenuse is what we are looking for. AC. Now let me cross multiply again. So this is root 3 AC is 10. 2 into 5 is 10. So AC is 10 over root 3. Again root 3 has come in the denominator. What I do? Again I will rationalize this. Multiply with root 3. This also multiply with root 3. This is 10 into 1.732. And the whole side is 3. So if you multiply 10, it will be 17.32 divided by 3. So if you divide this, then 3, 5, 15, then you have 23. So you have 3, 7, 21. Again 22, 3, 7, 21. So it goes on and on. Now I know that this part of the tree is 2.89 meter. And this part of the broken part, the upper part of the tree, which is broken, is 5.77 meter. And the question is asking you, what was the height of the tree before it was broken? So before it was broken, it was this and this. So the height of the tree. Now you can write height of the tree before it was broken is that 2.89 plus 5.77. So if I add these two, so addition will give us the height of the tree before it was broken. So this will be 6, this will also be 6, and this is what is 8. So the height of the tree before it was broken is or was 8.66 meter. This is what is a, a double calculation kind of equation when the tree is uh, broken. So two two part is what we have to calculate in order to understand like what was the height of the tree before it was broken. <coughs>
know, to give you an idea about uh, what I mean by that double triangle question, I think I'll do one question uh, based on double triangle. You can, if you come across that, uh, then uh, you can uh, try. Maybe in the next class, I'll be discussing more of such uh, double uh, triangle question. And yes, that four mark question in your board exam, which is large, usually it contains a double triangle, this kind. Now, you, you have to really read it uh, again and again. Now, till now, we have been doing a very easy question. All questions are easy, single triangle. But now, you'll come across more than one triangle. Let me take question number 14. The angle of elevation of a tower at a point is 45 degree. So, somebody is looking at the tower. Very good. Let me make the diagram. Somebody is looking at this tower yeah, from here. And he finds that the angle of elevation is 45 degrees. So from here he looks at the top of the tower, elevation, you look up. You have to see from down you have to see up. From here he is looking at the tower. So first part of the sentence is easy. The angle of elevation of a tower at a point is 45 degrees. After going 40 meter towards the tower, okay, this person is here. He is going now 40, 40 meter towards the tower. This person is here. He is going towards the tower now. From here he walks 40 meter towards the tower. Okay, sometimes the person says away, away means you have to go away, that's right. But since here it says that he is going towards the tower and then 40 meter towards the tower. That is why. So here today 40 meter is what I mean. So here it is supposed to come here and walk 40 meter and again how many is it there? Again he is looking at the same tower. From there. Now from here he is looking at the tower. Now he finds that the angle of elevation now has become 60 degrees. So previously from there it was 45 degrees. After moving 40 meters towards the tower, now again from here he looks at the same tower, top the tower. Now he finds that the angle of elevation has increased to 60 degrees. And the question now is telling you what is the height of the tower? Tell you what height of the tower. Let me give you the name. So let this be E, E, this point C, this point B. This is the most uh, uh, okay. uh, uh, it has popular question in the Buddhism, this kind of question. This is neither tough, even though it contains a double right angle triangle, two right angle, even though you are seeing here three triangles are there, one triangle here, which is a right angle triangle, right angle here. The other one is this small one here, it is the same, but this is of no use because it is not a right angle triangle, there is no 90 degrees there. So the third one is this big one. The big one also has 90 degrees. So that's why I said two right angle triangles, one big one, the other one is the small one. Now we have to use both of these. There are many ways of solving this question, many ways. And the question is telling you to find the height of the tower. This is what the height of the tower. Okay, I'll go by one way. I think that, that is what uh, is easier. In the small right angle triangle, as well as also in the bigger right angle triangle, one side is common side, one side is same, and that side which is same is AB. You can see in the small triangle also AB is there, in the bigger triangle also you have AB. Let us take that common side as X. Just continue. So if you don't want to take X, you can take it as AB also and solve it. But let the height of the tower be X. Now that is what we are looking for now. Usually, if I start with a small triangle, and every time my suggestion is if you are doing it by this method, you start always with a small triangle. So, I will start with a small triangle. Now, in this type of question, there are more than one right angle triangle that are always means and which triangle you are taking. There it is, it's always proper. In triangle ACB, but here I am taking this triangle because later on I will take the other one. So, in the small triangle, I want this. And usually, this type of question, every time it is tag. The base is what you want, perpendicular is what you have, as you, for tan. You don't even have to think about sine or a cos. So base and perpendicular. So let me take tan. And the angle for the small triangle is 60. So tan 60 is perpendicular by base. Tan value is perpendicular by base. Tan 60 value is root 3. Now, if this is the angle, perpendicular is there, x. Base is CB. Okay, let me write this base as CB. Now let me find CB in terms of x. Cross multiply now. If I cross multiply CB into root 3 will be root 3 CB and 1 to x is x. So that means CB is x by root 3. Now I calculated what is CB. CB means from here to here. So from here to here the value is x by root 3. Now let me write down here x by root 3. Now we know from here to here is x by root 3 and from here to here it is 40. So if I want to find from here to there it is 40 plus x by root 3. Okay. So I for 
this uh, small triangle, this uh, the small triangle which I have taken, triangle ACG, I found out what is CG in terms of X, and that is X by root. Now let's go for bigger triangle. In triangle, bigger triangle now, A, D, B. In triangle A, D, B, okay, I'll just stand. Now forget about this line now, think about this big triangle. In this big triangle, base, you know now, in terms of X, and perpendicular. Again, base and perpendicular, again. But the angle is different. In this big triangle, as you can see, angle is 45. In the small one, it was 60. But in the bigger one, it is 45. So I take 10, 45. Again, is equal to perpendicular base. But then don't forget, I'm taking the bigger triangle now. 10, 45 value, you know. 10 triangles, it is 1. Perpendicular. For the big triangle, the angle is perpendicular again. X. Base is this full from here to there. And here to there means from here to here, it is 40. And from here to there, it is x by root 3. Okay. Now, it's all about simplifying this. Do it carefully, nicely. See how I am doing it. 1 is equal to x over this lower side. I'm going to add 1 in root 3. Well, soon as root 3. The 1 is going to be root 3 into 40. It's 40 root 3. Plus root 3 is 1. 1 into x is x. Now, as you take this one up, it gets reciprocal. As you take it up, convert this division into a multiplication, so it gets reciprocal. So root 3 will go and multiply upper one. 1 is equal to be root 3x. Now see, I root 3, I have attached with an x. And on the lower side, you have 40 root 3 plus x. Okay, still I have not caught the value of x. Now I'll cross multiply now. Cross multiply means 1 into root 3x is root 3x equal to 1 is again multiplying this to be 40 root 3 plus x. So we have one x here, the other one here. And they are not as easy. So what I'll do, all x I'll bring it on one side. That x also I'll bring this side. So it will be root 3x. Now as that plus x is coming, this will be minus x. And that side is 40 root 3. So now don't subtract, don't put the value of root 3 here at 1.73 and subtract. You should not do that. Now you take out what is common between these two, x is common. And if x is common, it is root 3 minus 1. Root 3, and here as x is already out, it will be 1. And that side is 40 root 3. Now I am looking for x. This bracket is multiplying. As this bracket is taken that side, this bracket will go there and divide. So it is 40 root 3 will be divided by root 3 minus 1. Still a very complicated value now that again I cannot put the value of root 3 as 1.72 still. But what if I solve the right hand side then I will get the value of x and that is what I want. That is what I, the question is asking what is the height of the tower. So for the x equal to, okay now I am copying this one, 40 root 3 over root 3 minus 1. So this is what I copied there. Now again here last night, rationalization. But rationalization is not easy like the previous question. Here rationalization has a minus or a plus. How to rationalize such? If you remember that last night rationalization of denominator, you have to multiply with the same thing, but the opposite sign. If it's minus, you have to multiply with plus. Denominator I multiply and the upper side, numerator also have to multiply with the same number. So root 3 plus 1. Then x equal to now. So here you go now. 40 root 3. Let me not cancel it. I need have to uh, cancel the denominator with that 40. 40 root 3 into root 3 plus 1 inside. And this is a minus b, a plus b. Again, algebraic formula. a minus b, a plus b is a square minus b square. So there you are. a square minus b square. So x equal to 40 root 3, root 3 plus 1 over, this is root 3 square is 3 minus 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. Now finally our denominator is gone because 2 I can cancel with 40, 20 times. So let's multiply now with this 20 root 3 which is outside the bracket. Let's multiply both of them. 20 root 3 into root 3, 20 root 3 into 1. 20 root 3 into root 3. Root 3 into root 3 is 3. So 3 into 20. This becomes 20 into 3. Uh, again I am repeating 20 root 3 into root 3. Root 3 into root 3 is 3. So 3 into 20. Plus 20 root 3 into 1 is 20 root 3. So x equal to this is 16 plus 20 into 1.73. Now I can put the value of root 3. So x value equal to 16 plus, and if you multiply this, this is 0, 4, 6, 14, 3. So 3 place of decimal, so it is 
34.64. Now you can add the 60 with 34.64. So x value is equal to 94.64 meter. And the question was telling me what is the height of the tower? So your height of the tower was AB and that AB is 94.64 meter. Yeah, this is what is uh, a double triangle question. So when you have a double triangle question, uh, yeah, I would suggest that at least you can try up to question number uh, 20 uh, till 20. You can, in fact, uh, just now I did question number 14. 14 and 20 is very similar. Uh, you can try other questions also. And yes, uh, one very important thing I should tell you is that I know you'll come across a lot of problems. And in the email uh, which uh, you people are sending, it is not very feasible because most of you are sending in for photograph form. Okay, now from next class onwards, we'll do something. When I will be uploading this in YouTube, I'll be giving you my number, not my personal number, in fact, and another temporary number which I'll be using. And uh, put it in your group, in your uh, science group, sorry, not science and commerce group. In fact, to class 9 also I have done the same, but I'm not going to give the same number which I have given to class 9. I am going to maintain yours a little uh, separate group so that all do not go into the same thing. So I will give you another uh, number, WhatsApp number. If you have any doubts, till 20, by the way, our first class till 20, our next class, I will try to do it within this day before our next Monday class. So one more class I want to do so that we can finish this high distance. Uh, and if you have any doubt till 20, you can discuss it out. Uh, in fact, you can tell me your uh, doubt, ask me your doubts, question number you can give. Uh, and I'll try to solve. Wait for three, four days because I'll not be outside solving and sending it. You solve whichever question you can, you solve it. And whichever you cannot, you just uh, uh, watch at me. Uh, that particular question number, I'll try to solve and send it back to you. But I want you all to try at least till 20. Maybe from 21. If you can, you can go ahead and do other questions also. But then, uh, maybe from 21 onwards, I'll be discussing the next uh, small classes, maybe part two, at least I'll keep it as part one, and now maybe part two, I'll be uploading very soon. Okay, so till that time, by the way, now I'll be giving again, I'm repeating, what now don't send in my email, even your homework, you'll be sending me in the form of a PDF in my that WhatsApp number, and uh, I'll be checking who is doing and who is not, uh, rather than in email, so now I'm switching over to WhatsApp number. So please do that, your doubts, as well as also your homework, I want it in that number. I'll be putting that number. Not it's not possible to do it in YouTube or else I'll be flooded with all the queries. So please, uh, I'm going to put it in your group, in your class group, so you people can put your queries. Okay, till that time. Thank you and goodbye.